In this video, I'll be giving you an introduction to Drive, vehicle swept path analysis software from Causeway. Drive is a standalone application. It utilizes the Causeway CAD engine and doesn't require a copy of AutoCAD to use. It does, however, read AutoCAD DWG files so that we can load our road layout design to work with. That's what I've got here at the moment. I've got a, a previously created uh, drawing and I'm going to use this to demonstrate some of the features in Drive. Uh, we're going to start off by just defining um, a turn. So we're going to bring a vehicle up and do a right turn into the side road. Uh, I'm going to show you what this looks like using a fire appliance. So on the Drive tab on the ribbon, I select Define. The vehicles in Drive are organized into a number of groups. These represent each of the design standards that are typically used. I'm going with DB32 and their fire appliance. The display style describes the graphical entities and colors of the things that are going to go onto the drawing. So whether we're having our vehicle outlines or the swept path envelope or vehicle tracks, things like that. And the design speed is used in conjunction with a lock to lock time defined for each vehicle to determine how quickly it can change direction. So with my settings set, I'm ready to go. I bring the vehicle down onto the drawing and I can use the right click menu to change to orientation mode. So I can align the vehicle with the road, like so, and then position it where I want to start. And I click to position. And then as I move the mouse, we can see immediately that the swept path envelope is calculated in real time. So then I've just got to click where I want to take the, the vehicle to. If I don't like the position I've moved to, I can right click and say undo and then do it again. Now, hopefully we're not going to make too many mistakes because we can use the predictors to help us. Now, the polygons that are drawn out of the front of the vehicle, these are showing us the extents or the range of motion that the vehicle has in its next step. So these are uh, what would happen if we turn the wheel hard lock left, hard lock right, or straight ahead. So I'm using those to align the vehicle with the kerb, making sure I don't overrun the kerb, and then I know where to position it so that I can make the turn. I run through the turn, and again, I can use the straightforward predictor to see how far I need to go, and then I'm ready to, to move forwards, uh, and then I can close, and that's it finished. What we can see is we've got a vehicle skeleton at the start and the end of the path we've drawn. I've also got a skeleton at the two intermediate ditch points that I've put in. I've got an arrow on these that show the front of the vehicle, so the direction the vehicle is facing. And we've got another arrow that shows the direction of motion. And the blue polygon, field polygon, is the overall vehicle swept path envelope. Afterwards, I can select this object and it's editable. We don't have to go with what we've drawn if we don't want to. I can go and pull any of this around if that's what I want to do. Uh, and the path is recalculated automatically. I can do it graphically from the grip points or I can go and do it from the properties box. Each of the bits of information, everything from the vehicle selection, the display style through to all of the points that we've defined on the drawing can all be edited through properties so everything can be changed after the event if we want to. If I look at this a little bit more closely, we can see that as we've started the turn, we've crossed over our curb line here. We can see where the, uh, the polygon goes across. And obviously this is uh, something of a concern. Uh, we'd need to look at this in a bit more detail. The key question we're going to ask is, is that just the overhang at the rear of the vehicle or have the wheels actually gone uh, across the kerb? So in order to see that better, what I can do is select the path and then go and change the display style. So rather than showing the default display style, I'm going to change this to tracks uh, and the tracks display style is going to show us the path the wheels follow rather than the extents of the, the envelope. And now what we can see is that uh, our wheel doesn't cross over the, the curb line. 
Um, so that's all good. So what we want to do is try and understand exactly what did happen as we go around uh, and start the, the turn. If I select the track option from the ribbon and select my path, what I can now do is move the vehicle along the path. And I do that just by pulling the mouse uh, across the route that the vehicle's taken. And what we can see is as it starts to turn, it's actually the rear left-hand corner of the vehicle that crosses over the, the curb. And that's what was causing that bulge in the envelope. Um, so we can then make a, a decision, a judgment call, as to whether that's acceptable or whether we need to move the path or whether we need to consider our, our junction design. I'll show you another maneuver. If we look to the other end of our, of our road, what we're gonna do is just show you a car doing a three point turn in the turning head. Again, select define. This time we've got everything I want. I want to use the, the private car. So I'm just gonna click position and orient and then the same idea, approach the, the turn, uh, use the predictors to line up the vehicle's end position do the turn and then what you see is as I start moving backwards is that I don't have to tell the software I now want to take the vehicle into reverse. Uh, Drive works this out automatically based on the position of the mouse in relation to the, the orientation of the vehicle. It's changed the color of the envelope. That's something that's defined in the in the display style so that we can easily see that this segment of the path is, is in reverse. So when I'm happy, again, I click and then I can carry on, go forwards and finish off the rest of the route. And once again, very simple. I don't have to think about editing it really or going back and tweaking any of the points using the predictors. I can produce the curve uh, first time most times. So that's, I think, everything I wanted to show you with this drawing. Uh, I'm going to load another drawing uh, to show you something else. So in this case, we've got the layout of a, of a car park for a store. This is the, the entry road. Um, and this is where we'd have to come to the service area for unloading the delivery lorries. What we need to do is make sure that we can bring our articulated vehicle down, reverse, re reverse up, to the service area uh, without crossing over any of our curbs. Now, we've been asked to do this using the FTA 1998 articulated vehicle, but we've also been asked to increase its turning circle slightly. In fact, we've been asked to increase its turning circle by 300 mil. So I'm gonna show you how we can um, produce a new vehicle in the library. Uh, although drive ships with, with a number of vehicles in its default library, it's easy to modify those or create any new vehicles if you want to. So let's go and have a look at, look at that. I'm going to click Vehicle Library on the toolbar. And what we can see is for each of the groups, we've got a list of each of the, each of the vehicles. And then for each vehicle, uh, we get a preview of what it looks like. And we get a number of pages of data that describe it, that said all of the dimensions that we're working to. Now, we want to modify the turning circle for the FTA 1998 articulated vehicle, but rather than uh, editing the details directly, we may want that vehicle at some point in the future. So what I'm gonna do is create a copy. So copy vehicle, I'm gonna call it my articulated vehicle, and I'm gonna put it in a new group my vehicles. If I then step through the pages of, of data, we get to steering and steering curb to curb radius is currently set to 6.55. I'm going to change that to 6.85. That's our extra 300 millimeters as requested. And then I'm going to say apply. And we can see that my articulated vehicle now appears in the list and it's in a group called my vehicles and we're ready to go. So I close that, I say define, I select my vehicles from the list and I now get my articulated vehicle and same as before, I'm gonna bring it down onto the drawing 
align it and position it. And then we'll drive it down. Use the predictors to get it nicely back to the service area and enter. And we're a little bit close down here, so we can go and move some of these points over. And we've just about got all of the clearance we need. So for the purposes of this demonstration, that's everything we need to do. Thanks for watching.